I have 18 minutes and the time is ticking. And uh, we, need, we know that speed rules. Speed rules not only on the stage, speed rules also in our lives. How much time did it take the radio to reach 50 million people? You might know that, 38 years. How much time did, it use, uh, did TV need to reach 50 million people? 13 years. The internet reached the same number in four. The iPod in three. Facebook, two years. Apps needed one month for that. Our life is getting faster, and it gets new faster all the time. If life gets new faster, that also means that the new things get old faster. This is how Twitter feels to me. I think it's an old device. Skype, I can't even think uh, how it was before Skype. Facebook, uh, you see, you get the picture. Change happens really, really fast. We think it's the young woman, but then we notice the next thing, oh my God, it's an old woman. Change happens really, really fast. And change is very hard to deal with, um, especially if you're a company. So let's look back in time. In the year 1870, the world belongs to the can. Everything was canned. Peas in cans, fish in cans, everything was canned. Hundreds of thousands of men and women worked in canneries in the United States. A couple of years later, 1930s, the work belongs to ice. People had wooden chests and they got ice delivered and they put a block of ice in the wooden chest and keep their food fresh. In the 1950s, the world belongs to the refrigerator. The electric refrigerator is a standard in every home. How many can producers moved into ice? The answer, zero. How many ice producers moved into refrigeration? Again, zero. They all saw the development. Oh my God, more and more people have fridges, more and more people have ice boxes, but no one saw the bigger business they are in. No one saw the bigger concept. Their business was making food stay fresh longer. Making fruit stay fresh longer was the business they were in, but what they saw was their technology. I'm in cans, I'm in ice, I'm in refrigeration. I call this competence blindness. They didn't know what was happening, and competence blindness happens all the time. When I was a kid, everybody had a Walkman, now everybody has an MP3 player. Walkman was the market leader, now they are nothing. When I was a kid, I took my photos on a Polaroid camera, now everybody takes photos digitally. When I was uh, living somewhere, uh, <laughs> I always went to Blockbuster to get my videos. Blockbuster was in business for 25 years. They had $2 billion of sales in 1989, and they went bankrupt in 2010. From the original 500 companies listed by the SP500, which is the largest best performing companies in the United States. In 1957, this was founded. Only 74 existed 40 years later, which means from the biggest companies in the United States, 85% died within 40 years. Why is that? I think what happens is they did not see the threat. I know that Blockbuster was saying, we have a brick store, people like the actual copy of a DVD, hold it in the hand. In addition to things like Netflix, we sell popcorn and Coke, and people love coming to us. But that was not true, because people loved just watching TV. They wanted entertainment. They didn't necessarily need a copy. I was talking with a bunch of people yesterday, that everybody said, and I, I read about it all the time, that books will always prevail. Books will be there all the time. Nobody can cuddle up with a Kindle, with an e-book. Now, bookstores in the United States are going bankrupt by the millions because everybody cuddles up with a Kindle. So they didn't see the threat, but they also didn't see the opportunity. Blockbuster did not say, hey, we can give this, you know, our videos away electronically and we can reach people that we normally do not reach with our stores. Uh, they did not see this, and they didn't need to. Why did they not need to, and why did they not see it? They were not looking at it. They had a why attitude. Why change? A couple of years ago, we made two billion in profit in business. I think we're really, really safe. We're the market leaders. Nobody can uh, threaten us. And the why attitude is that they are so big that they are afraid to lose market share. They are afraid to lose. And they want to keep things as they are. They want to be really, really safe. 
Here's a very good example. It's a top performing brand, Palm Olive. It's totally, totally good. It has a steady growth. It reaches millions and millions of people. And everybody is totally happy about it because it has a steady performance. And they say that's a really good investment. Invest in Palm Olive. You have a steady performance. It's the best thing you can do. But users are looking for better stuff all the time. And here's one user, and he bought a designer kitchen. The designer kitchen cost $50,000, and then he put a bottle of palm olive in the kitchen, and he says, oh, with the bottle looks really ugly. <laughs> and my, it, you know, it's downgrading my kitchen. And I have a designer kitchen, why not have a designer detergent? A detergent to, to a dishwash detergent that looks good in my designer kitchen. And he put the money where his mouth is, and he developed this method. And method is just a regular dish soap, but it doesn't crep the look of the designer kitchen. And now it's sold $75 million, and it has 3,400% growth in three years. That's a major opportunity, and that is why not attitude. And why can't those people have a why not attitude? They can have it because they can only win. They have nothing to lose. And the people that have all this market share are afraid of losing. Why change? We want to keep things as they are. And the young people are ready to fight this and win with why not attitude. And they know that they see the things because they see what the people want, not what the companies want. And it is the users who drive the market. So here's one word that's relatively exciting, and that's the word market. So let's look at what a market is, and let's see it through the eyes of my son. <laughs> Jasper, daddy, what is the market? And uh, he has a really friendly vision of the market, and my vision of the market is a little bit darker. To me, the market is an arena. It's a fighting place. Products, services, and brands are the fighters in this arena. And what they do is they want the best weapons, which they want more advertising budget, they want the newest technology, so that they can fight each other. And what those fighters do, and you can see it here potentially, is they watch each other. What is the next guy doing? They react to each other's moves. But what they forget is that it's not about their fight only, because only the audience can give the thumbs up. It's not just them. The audience can give the thumbs up. It's only the audience that decides who will live and who will die. It is you guys that basically decide Polaroid is going to die. Boom. Bye-bye, Polaroid. It's you who decides that maybe now I think uh, Nokia phones have a really serious problem. They used to have 70% world market share. Now they're down to 20 because you buy iPhones. It's you. You are really, really strong. So it's all about you. So the questions those fighters should ask themselves is how can I make the audience happy? And today I'm going to show you five maneuvers that makes the audience really, really happy. Maneuver number one is fame. Everybody loves the famous person. Hey, look, there's a famous person. Let's go run, get an autograph. And this fame is created through certain methods, and you can create fame. And one of the businesses that creates fame is advertising. Advertising can create fame. There's a little test that advertising works, and it creates fame, and it goes like this. You can pick a car, and car number one has a CD player in it. And car number two has a CD player, nice leather upholstery, air conditioning, and a navigation system. Who would like to get car number one? Nobody. Who would like to prefer car number two? Yeah, lots of people. Car number one, by the way, is a Porsche. Car number two is a Lada. <laughs> I expect that you change your mind really, really quickly. Why? Because advertising told you. Fame works really, really fast. It's brand image. I know a Porsche, and you really, really want to do that. And you think you know a Porsche, but you don't, because maybe you never really bought one. You maybe you never sat in one. But the image of the Porsche is so attractive that you would say, I prefer a Porsche with a CD player to Lada with whatever all the time. So pff, the fame is created often before you buy it. I call that pre-purchase. The second thing that people like is that people like to trust other people. And you like other people because you say, hey, you have a Porsche, how do you like it? Is it good? Is it not good? And you ask a lot of other people how they like the product after they bought it. So when they use the product, I call this use advertising. Advertising works before you buy it, use advertising works during the usage of the problem. Another test again. 
Uh, you have to pick a movie. Movie number one has Johnny Depp, Cameron Diaz, Russell Brand, and Olivia Wilde, and movie number two has nobody you really know. But then you go look at the stars, and movie number one has three, two stars, and movie number two has five stars. And I bet there's a bunch of people who'd say, hey, let's give it a shot. Why not? It's a five-star movie. Everybody loves it. It's exciting. Let's go watch this movie. Why does it change? You know all these people. They're all very, very famous. Those people are not really, really famous, but a lot of people trusted them after they saw the movie. So fame is good, but using the product, experiencing is very, very important. That's why a lot of companies now invest into making people that already bought the product really, really happy to get a lot of Amazon stars and stuff like that. So trust depends on others who have used it, and it's post-purchase. Third thing, people act on situations, and that's called myvertising. Myvertising uses these adver uh, Situations, it's just advertising or information or services created for me. Who am I? What books do I like? What films do I like? You all know that from Amazon and iTunes and stuff like that. Where am I? GPS-based information. Oh, are you looking for a girl in Salzburg? <laughs> Said uh, my computer to me this morning. So the computer knew that I'm in Salzburg. And I said, no, I'm married, I'm happy. But whatever. So GPS information knows where you are. And obviously, the time knows what time it is. When do you want the information? So it's much better to send you uh, an information about a nice restaurant in Salzburg tonight when I am in Salzburg and when it's not too early in the morning, because in the morning I don't think about it. Those things are catered to my individual situation, and that is really, really important. They know where I am, what I like, and what I do. And decisions, after all, are made in situations. A product, therefore, is a situation. It's a little bit challenging, but it's really, really true. Products are situations. A glass of water is not a glass of water. A glass of water in a water company, after I drank six liters of water, and they say, hey, you want another glass of water, to me is not attractive at all. I said, no, thanks, I already drank six liters, I don't want anything. A glass of water in the desert, after I have, didn't drink any water for like two days, is really, really valuable. Would you trade your Porsche against a glass of water? Yeah, yeah, immediately. And the only thing that changed is the situation. The glass of water is the same. It's the exact same glass of water, but the situation changed. So products are situations. Again, another test. You get to do all these car tests, relatively good. You get a company car. You get a company car and you can choose a company car. So which cars do you consider? Does anybody consider any company cars? Most people, I don't know, you, you consider the cars. I tell you what you consider. You consider maximum three different brands. Let's say Audi, Mercedes, BMW, just to say something. Those are the car you consider. You don't consider more than that. So the mental availability of the brands, that the brands pop into your mind, is really limited. Three brands for the thing, company car, okay? Now, you have to drive across Africa, from all the way in northern Africa, through the entire continent to southern Africa. Which cars do you consider now? I tell you which. Probably others, different cars. So the good car for a company car might be a bad car in the desert or in the jungle. So it's a different kind of car. Now you want a million dollars in Las Vegas, and you want to show off and drive the strip up and down. Which cars do you consider now? Again, different cars. So what that means is that buying stuff depends on the situation you are in. So if you're a brand, you have to dominate the situation. You have to think, what is the situation of the user, and how can I dominate that situation? The domination of the situation designer kitchen cannot be achieved in an, with an ugly product. That's why a method is so successful. And the situations often initiate a purchase. So I'm hungry, and then I'm in the situation I'm hungry, and then which card brands do I consider? I don't know, McDonald's? and then I can immediately go there if the product is there, if McDonald's is there. That's called mental availability. I'm thinking about McDonald's, physical availability, McDonald's is there. But today, you can have physical availability also in a digital world, because I can have a, a location finder, I push the button and it says, oh, there's a McDonald's, and I walk past a potential kebab stand or past a potential pizzeria, because I know there will be the gold thing, the golden arch that I want. Okay, number four, people love it simple. 
It's a very, very easy statement. A movie with having to walk to McDonald uh, to uh, Blockbuster or with having to drive to Mac uh, Blockbuster is okay, but a movie without walking wins. Food with opening a can is okay. Food without having to open a can wins. It's very, very simple. Simplify your use. So whatever, uh, simplify your, your using things. That's exactly what Amazon did with the one-click shopping and stuff. It's not, do you really want to buy the product? Are you really, really sure? Give me your entire name, address again and again and again. They say, boom, click here, job done. Okay, number five, fifth maneuver, people love extras. Extras really, really rock. I was just having a coffee and I noticed there's uh, black coffee, black coffee with sugar, espresso, cappuccino. If there would have been a fair trade or an organic coffee, I would have bought the fair trade or organic. It's free. <laughs> it's number one. And why not be good if it's a nice extra, right? So a phone plus a camera is much better than just a phone. A camera plus video is much better than just a regular camera. A video plus a Facebook function is totally good. Function plus service really rules. Function plus looks really rules, like the detergent. Or function plus things like being organic or being good for you or being healthy really, really works. So the extras are what wins. Okay, so in total, what is the audience waiting for? Number one, fame. Try to make your product famous and try to do that with advertising. Mass advertising is really, really good for that. What are they waiting for? Also, trust. That's use advertising. Make people that use the product really, really happy. Give them more services, keep them on the go, send them things and make it easy for them to like the product. You have to be better than what they expect. Then they would give you five stars and that's really important because those five stars will get you a lot of more business. Number three, think in situations, my advertising. How can you cater things to the specific needs of a specific person at a specific place in a specific time? This is really, really good and it's a totally booming market. Number four, think about simplicity, make things very, very easy. And number five, think about extras. What can I add on to those things? Do the fighters who fight in this arena have to be big? No, they don't need to be big. The small method wins against palm olive. Do the fighters have to be rich? No, I'll give you an example in one minute. Because if they have dedication, if the fighters have dedication, they win. And here's a 32-second example of it. There was a guy who invented premium cola, and his name is Uwe Lübermann. He's a regular guy from Hamburg. And step one was that Africola, which he used to drink, changed the recipe. He was really frustrated about that because Africola took caffeine out of Africola, a lot of caffeine. So step two was the easy path. Uwe Lieberman asked Africola to change it back. Can you, you know, I, I like the old Africola, can you change it back? And they said no, you know, to no avail. So he asked again and again and nothing happened. And then he got really, really upset and really, really mad with them because he wanted his old Africola back. So there was step, step three, just do it. He found some old bottles on uh, eBay, actually. He found a chemist to analyze the bottles. He found a producer to produce it. And he found distribution. The distribution he started with was one little sausage stand in, in Hamburg. Then he found more and more customers. More people came to the sausage stand. And they said, hey, can we have it in those in clubs? It's a really cool drink. We want it everywhere. And today, he sells premium cola, premium coffee, and premium beer in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, including supermarket change chains. And that led him to step four. And step four is change the world. He's really, really successful. And he says, now I'm going to change the world. And he founded the corporation of decent drink producers, of producers that listen to the audience, that pay fair money, and that are very, very friendly. And it's a really, really, really big success. So users rule. You are the, rule, the users. So stop waiting and start doing. And you have to do that now, because time is running out. OK, thank you very much.